In a previous video, we looked at LLMs and whether or not they are going to continue to get way better or they're going to sort of plateau out. We're not going to keep talking about that today, as you're pleased to know. But I was interested in, you know, some of the things that LLMs we were talking about that they don't do well. So, you know, maybe they aren't good at talking about very niche subjects that haven't been well represented in the training set. How could you improve their performance on, on those areas? So maybe what we want to do is, is use the ability of a large language model to move text around and convert text and summarize text, but in a way that's perhaps a little bit more specific to some text we're interested in, so that the accuracy is better. That's the idea. So what we're going to look at today is something called Retrieval Augmented Generation, or RAG. And very simply, we're just going to take our query, we're going to combine it with some actual data and look at them at the same time. You can actually see this already happening. So if you go to Google and you search for something, or you go to Bing and you search for something, often an AI in some sense will pop up and try and tell you about that thing. In my experience that's somewhat helpful but actually I just wanted the link that was the first link down. What this is doing is something called RAG or Retrieval Augmented Generation. So the idea is we know what we've asked about, we might not have all the information we need in the weights of the network already, it might not know about these things, but what it can do is summarise text. So maybe we should load in a website to do with that subject and have a look at that at the same time. So when Bing or some other search engine does this, what they're doing is they're bringing in sources of information, that retrieval, and then they're adding that into that process, answering hopefully better text output. Right? And then you can see also it has the advantage that it also allows it to cite its sources. So instead of just saying, yeah, this is the, this is the truth about this thing, you can be like, well, where's the website you actually read that so I can verify this for myself? Right? That's something that's quite useful to do. Well, normally we would have something like an LLM and something like this. So this might be ChatGPT, GPT-4, it might be Llama 2 or some other model, there's lots of them now. And we're gonna put in our query, that's a G. Uh, so I'm gonna put in my query. Now, the query will be a question about something. So, you know, what is the capacity of some football stadium, right? We've been the Euros on, so we can talk about that. Um, although I don't have very many opinions, England not doing well enough as always. So we're gonna put in our query, what is the capacity of this stadium? Now, the LLM might get that right. It might know because it's read the Wikipedia articles as part of a training process. But a better way of getting accuracy for this would be to bring in some sort of data, right? So bring in data, which we're gonna get from the internet live, and then we can combine that with our query, with a big plus symbol, and that's gonna go into our LLM, and then it's gonna be our answer. Now, the reason that that's effective is because an LLM is quite good at paraphrasing text. If you say, here's a paragraph that I wrote that's not very good, please rewrite it for me. That's one of the things they can do quite well. Um, and, or at least better than something where you're just asking them to come up with data out of nowhere. And this doesn't have to be a Wikipedia page. This could be your stock product prices. It could be information on ticket sales. It could be some information on your company. So maybe you're trying to run a tech support for your internal staff and you can draw in information with frequently asked questions in it and then it can answer those questions in a, in a sort of more natural way. And the benefit, I suppose, would be that they can ask it questions directly as if it was a person, when obviously it's not. But maybe slightly more um, pleasant experience than just trying to scroll down a website to find the exact thing you need, or searching on an internal website and, not, and getting just lost in a bunch of pages that doesn't, don't have the information in you want. This is actually a very, very straightforward process. There are lots of libraries that can help you do this. But the idea is that you're actually going to create a bigger query or a bigger prompt for your LLM based on your query and any data sources. Does this stop or combat the hallucination thing? Because obviously there's a big problem with large language models where they kind of just guess what you want to hear. Yeah, yeah, they're trained to produce next words and sometimes those next words are meant just to look nice and not be factually accurate. So my, I guess my, having tried this out a little bit, my, um, my feeling is that it does help a bit. It won't, of course, completely stop an LLM from saying what it wants, right? And it might, for example, misread, in inverted commas, the, the, the information, right? So maybe you, you query some data from Wikipedia, but the information isn't in the Wikipedia article that you need. Or maybe it is, but it's buried among a bunch of tables. And Nuanced too, or whatever. Yeah, and, and you know, there are some models that have very, very large inputs. So Gemini, for example, the Llama model has an input of 8,000 tokens. So if you imagine you give it a 5,000 word document and say, what's that specific bit of information I need? It may find it, it may not find it, right? I would say the chances of it completely making something up are at least reduced, but that's just my personal feeling on the matter. 
I would say, as always in these situations, maybe we can have some scientific data on this. Let me show you a little bit about, in a very simple level, how it works. Bearing in mind there are lots of libraries for doing this and lots of different ways to do it. So we might use a library like Langchain to do this. Langchain is a library that allows you to do things like RAG and other you know, ways of interfacing with LLMs beyond simply giving them a string and reading different tokens back. So the idea is we have a query from the user and then that query is going to be augmented by some other data. So let's say the user wants you to summarize a paper that they've read. So what you would do is you would take the PDF of that paper and you need to put it into the large language model. Now that's going to need some kind of retrieval process that allows you to scrape the text from that PDF. Right? So maybe we've got some data source and the problem with that data source is maybe it's not in the correct format. Actually, getting information out of Wikipedia is not too difficult because they make that nice and easy. But maybe your data is a PDF or it's an image or something more complicated than this. So you need some kind of conversion or some kind of data processing. So I'm just going to write, I don't know, processing. And this is going to be our sort of process data or our, our final data. So this is our data that we want to put into our model. Now we have something called a prompt template. Now a prompt template is going to include all of the information that the LLM is going to have directly into its context. So this could include system information like you are a, a chatbot trained by OpenAI, right? Or it could be more specific instructions like I'm going to give you some data, I'm going to give you a query, please answer that based on that, right? And don't go off piece and write poems about pirates. Um, it will still do this by the way if you ask. So this prompt template has in it instructions but it also has a place where this data will go and a place where the query will go. So maybe it has instructions and the instructions might be really straightforward, like you're going to receive some context, you're going to receive a query, off you go, right? Then it has a place for the data or the context or the information or whatever. It might have more than one place. So maybe there's sort of numerical results. So maybe numbers in here in some way. And then you have your query, which is the actual prompt that the users put in. And then maybe you have final instructions or some other information, right? And then this is going to be converted into a giant prompt of tokens, which goes into the large language model, and then it makes its next word prediction and it spits out an answer, right? So I've actually implemented one of these. I say implemented, I joined together a couple of libraries and took the lazy way out. Uh, and we can see this working. Right, so it's football time. So we're going to load up a stadium from Berlin, where part of the Euros is being held, and we're going to grab that information from Wikipedia, and we're going to stick it into here and hope that we can answer questions about it. That's the idea. And, and this might be slightly more accurate, for example, than if we just ask questions without any kind of context being added at all. So Olama is the library I'm using to actually run the large language model. So Olama is a nice open source library where you can run locally hosted versions of large language models. I'm running the Llama models here, which is where the name comes from. Those are released by Meta and they're open source. So they, this particular model, for example, is 70 billion parameters, which is pretty vast, not as big as ChatGPT4, but big enough to get pretty good text-to-text -text translation. I'm also using a library called Langchain, which allows me to do the prompt templates and things like this. Langchain does a lot of other stuff that I'm not using. So for example, there's a thing called Langgraph, which allows you to have LLMs to communicating with other LLMs, for example. And you can do all kinds of other stuff, like have them call functions and, and run maps and generate images and so on and so forth. Um, so this is a very, very simple piece of code. All I'm doing is I've got a couple of functions which allow us to grab content off Wikipedia. And I found one of the divs or the uh, main parts of the website in HTML is called MW body content. And that thing is essentially where the main text of the article is held. So I'm literally just grabbing the Olympia Stadion Berlin Wikipedia page. I'm passing it through a couple of very, very simple filters to get the right bit of the web page and to strip out all of the HTML so it's just text. Now you could do this in a much better way than I'm doing because you, you know, imagine you're going to get bits of image links and, and um, there's no heading information so there's no kind of structure to the document anymore. But it will be good enough. I'm going to grab that and then I'm going to stick it in when I make my query. So then I have something called a prompt template. I have a really simple one. You could be much more complex with your prompt templates. So mine just says, you're an AI assistant who answers questions with the provided context. And then it has, this is the context, this is the question, and this is where you're going to put your answer. Right? And I have these placeholders of context and question where that's where Langchain will insert the content that I've given it and the query that I've given it. And then that's pretty much it. So I'm going to create a new Llama model and I'm going to point it at the Llama 370 billion model which is running on our servers. 
I'm going to create a chain where we get the Wikipedia web data and then we pass it through our prompt. We pass it through a llama and then we convert it to a string. You know, and I'm going to ask, could you tell me a bit about this stadium in a really enthusiastic way aimed at kids? Right? Something like that. Try and make this a bit more exciting. I'm someone who has a passing interest only in football, so maybe this will be good for getting me uh, more excited as well. And then we're just going to invoke that chain and all of this will run uh, behind the scenes for us. So you can see that actually bringing in extra data is really not very complicated and I haven't done much uh, in here in terms of code at all. So let's run this now. So I'm going to bring up my prompt, so python rag.py, um, and it's going to trot off and it's going to run our large language model. Now this might take a while because we haven't been asking anything of this large language model, and it has to spin it up, it has to get the GPU ready, it has to initialize all the memory, some 33 gigabytes of memory if I recall. Um, that's in, in just on the graphics card. So it takes a little while. If you run it multiple times, it's a bit faster. You can imagine that if you were running this, let's say on Bing, you need to have a lot of servers primed and ready to serve people with queries. I think it takes about 30 seconds the first time and then about five to 10 seconds for another one. I'm sure I could speed it up by being more uh, competent with my coding. All right, here we go. All right, so, oh my gosh, kids, let me tell you about the amazing Olympia Stadion in Berlin, Germany, right? So, you missed the vocation though, you could be a kids TV person. Yeah, I could, right? I'll use it to script all my, my future content. So what it's done actually is quite good. So it's taken, Yes, it's in the style that's suitable for kids, that's great, but it has got some interesting information. So 74,000 uh, capacity, it's hosted concerts, um, it's got VIP areas, and so on and so forth. So it has drawn information from the Wikipedia article and put it in here. The reason that search engines are doing this is because the content will, generally speaking, be better. Of course, there'll be counter examples that are sometimes funny, sometimes a bit worrying um, about how this works. But the idea is that if you have the text right there in the context, it's at least more likely than it is just hoping that the training process itself has memorized all these facts. It's perhaps worth remembering that these models are very, very big. So this is 70 billion parameters. That's a lot of different things you can learn. ChatGPT is over double this size, right? And so th there's a good chance it'll learn a load about the Olympia Stadion Berlin already, right? And you'll be, and you'll be able to answer questions that, you know, ChatGPT will be able to tell you about these stadiums and things like that. The, I guess the, the thing is that when you have things that are less common right, or more difficult, that's when this data retrieval might help. Or things that are very specific to your use case. So maybe you have specific content from your company or for something like this. That is not going to be in the training set, we hope. And so in that case, they won't be able to answer these questions. And so it's those kind of times where bringing in extra data might help. Hey everyone, thanks for watching this video. It was brought to you by Jane Street. And Jane Street are looking for the next wave of curious and passionate people to join their latest internship program. This is an amazing program, and I think the sort of people who watch Computerphile could be the perfect match. If you haven't heard of Jane Street, they're a quantitative trading firm with offices all around the world. They're at the cutting edge of things like machine learning, distributed systems, programmable hardware, statistics, and Jane Street are currently taking applications for internships in quantitative trading, software engineering, research, and plenty more areas. It's pretty broad. The summer internships are in New York, London, and Hong Kong. You'll do amazing work, meet fascinating people, and the internship program also includes cool social events, guest speakers, all hosted in their world-class high-tech offices. I've been to some of them, they're very cool places to work. In addition to a salary for the summer, Jane Street will also cover all your flights and accommodation. It's an amazing opportunity. Last year's interns came from 22 different countries and all sorts of backgrounds. You don't need to know about finance, they just want people who are curious, collaborative, the sorts of people who I imagine might be watching these videos. No matter where you are in the world, no matter who you are, if you're interested, check out the link in the video description.